In this video, I'm gonna be going over some tips on keeping backyard chickens for beginners. Stay tuned because I'll also talk about some other things you wanna consider, like the egg color, the breed size, and other stuff like that. Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me today. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, happychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So having a new flock of chickens can be a roller coaster ride of ups and downs, especially for beginners. It takes years to learn the ins and outs of good chicken keeping. If I would go back and start over, there would be a handful of things I'd wish I'd known as a beginner. These tips will hopefully prevent confusion and heartache for the new chicken owner. And let's start off with number one, getting new baby chicks to eat and to drink water. Bringing home a box of peepers, one of the best feelings in the world, opening a box and seeing the new chicks bouncing around, stopping only to study you with their large inquisitive eyes is nothing short of breathtaking until the panic sets in. They need to eat now. Hatchery chicks will most likely arrive a day or two after they've hatched and they are dry and fluffy. When they arrive at their new home, they need to eat and desperately need to be rehydrated. Some smart chicks will know what to do almost immediately. Some have no idea and some may be too weak to figure it out on their own. And here's where we come in. To assist a chick in taking their first drink of water, I simply take them in my hand, hold them firmly but gently and lightly dip the tip of their beak in the water, just the tip to wet their whistle. I then watch them swallow awkwardly and then set them back down. That bit of water is often enough to make them instinctively go for more. To get them to feed, I tap my finger on the food dish or at food on the bottom of the brooder. Watching them rush to see what my finger is tapping on is amazing. It's as if my finger were a mother hen pecking at tasting ground treats. It works like a charm every time. The next tip is chickens are not for chasing. Sometimes a chicken needs to be handled or to be moved or receive medical attention. Chasing chickens is not a productive way to get a hold of them, nor is it meant to entertain neighbors as much as it usually does. This is usually a lesson all new chicken owners learn quickly. Chickens are wired to run fast. They're extremely swift and agile. So instead of chasing my chickens, I wait until dusk when they roost to make my move. Chickens become almost lethargic and tired at night. In most cases, a predator can pluck a chicken from its perch in the middle of the night with no issues. This is a time to consider clipping their wings as well. The next tip is protecting from predators. Whether kept in confinement or free range, chickens are at risk of attack from predators large and small. One of the most effective ways of preventing attacks is to lock the chickens in their coop at night even if they are free range. If this is not possible at the end of every day, an automatic chicken coop door is a great addition and it locks and or closes on its own. Chickens are intelligent and love to roost in the same place every single night. Like clockwork, they will come around the same time at the end of the day based on the season. If there are aggressive predators, please check your local and federal laws before culling predators. Some may be endangered or protected. Now, if you are interested in an automatic chicken coop door, I'll go ahead and link to our article in the description for that. Let's get on to the next tip, to crow or to not crow? Roosters, yes, roosters to some, are considered a pain. They can be noisy and some can be mean, but they are great for protecting their hens from aerial predators. Not all towns allow roosters, so it's important to check the local ordinances before adding a roo. I remember the first time my rooster signaled all of his hens to rush to the cover of the trees. I was at my kitchen table looking out the window. I still do not know how the rooster detected or sensed the hawk over the cover of the trees, but I have high respect for the diligent roosters who protect against predators. The next tip is dust baths are normal. It's easy to think that a chicken taking a dust bath is distressed or hurt. They wriggle and fluff about and almost looks like they are injured. However, dust baths are actually good for chickens. It helps them eliminate excess oils, preserve their feathers, and prevent mites and other unwanted hitchhikers. Confined chickens should be provided with an area to take a dust bath. They are completely happy with a pile of dirt from the garden. Free range chickens will find their particular spot, usually a beloved flower bed or landscaping mulch like at my place. We are working on a solution and get them from returning so we can stop brooming our sidewalk. The next tip is not to worry about molting because it happens every single year. At first, a molting chicken looks like it could be sick or injured. However, it is something that each chicken goes through at least once a year. Molting can be stressful for chickens, so they must have a place to stay safe and warm during this time. You can also feed them additional protein to give them the energy they need to get through the stress of a long and embarrassing molt. The next tip is choosing the right breed of chicken. Most people want to add chickens to their homestead for the eggs or to be entertained by their delightful antics. It's important to research chicken breeds rather than running to the feed store and grabbing 
whatever is in the water tank. Some chickens lay more eggs than others. Some are better suited for colder climates than others, and some are friendlier. Now let's get on to those tips that I was talking about in the beginning. Now, other things to consider, meat, or eggs. Some birds are bred as meat birds and they do not lay eggs often, if at all. This breed was not meant to live a long life. They grow very fast and if left unprocessed, they often die due to heart conditions or the inability to carry their weight. The next thing to consider is the color of the eggs. Various beautiful eggs range from white to light pink or blue to brown and chocolate. The third thing you wanna consider is the size of the chicken. How much space do you have? Bantams are small chickens, which means they lay small eggs. These little mini me's are best suited for people who may not have a lot of space to keep chickens. And lastly, ornamental or functional. Some chickens may lay very few eggs, but are lovely to look at. The next tip, chickens lay eggs everywhere. Even the most inviting nesting boxes are no match for the warm sunlit, just out of reach nook under the porch. Nothing is more frustrating than finding a clutch of old eggs in an area you can't reach. This often happens if chickens are free range upon arrival or have been free range for an extended period. They have their preferences, so sometimes you must retrain them to lay their eggs in a more accessible area. To remind a hen that the nesting box, which was so thoughtfully created for her, is the best place to lay her eggs, she should be confined with the nesting box for at least a week and then released. She will most likely continue to return to her nesting box to lay her eggs. Chickens are wonderful creatures of habit, stubborn but wonderfully predictable. Tip number nine, the importance of good feeders and founts. Unfortunately, chickens are messy little critters. Throughout the brooding period and into adulthood, having their right containers keeps chickens clean and healthy. Chickens scratch at the ground through their entire lives, which means they are also very messy in small areas. Water founts and waterers will often accumulate shavings, droppings, and feed as the chicks peck, scratch, and carry on as chickens do. A dirty fount or waterer is an excellent place for bacteria to grow, especially our near a brooder or in humid weather. Founts and feeders that restrict the amount of waste that enters the trays are ideal for chickens. Also, it's wise to keep feeders off the ground, preferably raised or hanging. This minor adjustment can keep chickens from making a huge mess and putting their health at risk. If you are interested in what kind of waterers and founts and feeders to get, we have a very in-depth guide on both. And lastly, stop the egg pecking, please. While it sounds strange, chickens tend to eat their eggs. It is frustrating to expect fresh eggs on the breakfast table, but none were collected from the coop. Usually a telltale sign of egg eating is when production seemingly stops. And there are no signs of illness. Egg eating often starts when an egg cracks under the weight of a hen. The hen becomes curious and pecks at the cracked egg, quickly realizing its deliciousness. Unfortunately, the rest of the flock takes note and also wants to try the egg from there. The problem spreads like wildfire it is like an epidemic and it's extremely frustrating the good news the egg pecking can be cured first and foremost ensuring the flock has the grit and calcium they need is of the utmost importance if the chickens don't have what they need they will seek calcium they crave in their eggs then simply what you can do is add a dummy egg usually a porcelain egg or a golf ball to the nesting box it will be enough to deter egg eaters pecking at the fake egg is uncomfortable and unproductive for the chickens, so they will usually give it up after a while if you need more help on this topic specifically, you can check out our complete guide on egg eating prevention. Chickens can be confusing and stubborn at times, so understanding their quirks and needs early on will ensure many years of delicious eggs and humorous backyard antics that hopefully didn't include a chase between a human and a chicken. If you like this video, be sure to check this one out over here. That's going to do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll talk to you soon.